making decisions can be a formidable challenge for some, while others breeze through them with ease. What's the underlying factor that distinguishes these two perspectives? Well, from my own experience, it often stems from developmental trauma. It could be the result of neglect during our formative years, a lack of attention, or the absence of acknowledgement that we matter. It might also emerge from not having our distress recognized or not feeling safe enough to express it. Each of these experiences can create unique complexities within us. As our nervous system evolves, we form intricate connections within our brain and our body. The map of our identity is shaped by both nature and nurture, influenced by the epigenetic imprints we carry and the potential for generational trauma. However, it's important to note that these patterns need not remain unchangeable. It may not be a quick fix, but lasting transformation rarely is. Healing yourself is undoubtedly a journey worth embarking upon. So what happens when the fear of making decisions takes hold? We might hesitate to share our feelings about something, as even the decision to express ourselves is a choice. We might be afraid of how others perceive us, caught in a looping thought pattern generated by our default mode network. This pattern can intensify over time, leaving us feeling immobilized. The fear of sharing transparently can stem from the dread of judgment. We may worry that others will label us, thinking she's foolish, too sensitive, over-emotional. The anxiety grows, especially in close relationships, leading to doubts and fears that if we do share our true selves, will be abandoned, leaving us without any meaningful connections. In response, we often stuff those emotions down, causing internal pain. Those trapped in this cycle may feel utterly helpless and believe there's no way out. They might even diminish themselves, becoming figuratively and sometimes even literally small, giving power to their inner critical voice. What's the antidote? to this cycle? Well, for me, it was the gift of being seen with compassion and warmth. When I was caught in that spiral, I needed someone to witness my vulnerability, just as one would gently observe a frightened fawn, hyper alert and ready to flee. However, there's another possible reaction when someone is seen without compassion. The pain can become too overwhelming, leading to a collapse if someone challenges their feelings or dismisses them as wrong, this can trigger the collapse or even a surge of rage. I want to slow it all down. I want to create a space where we move beyond right and wrong, where we sit together in a field where your experience is honored and cherished, a field where you can truly feel what it's like inside when you are received this way with compassion and without judgment. I'd venture a guess, you might feel hopelessness and despair, doubting whether anyone in the universe can truly see and care for you. Perhaps you long for the tiniest shift that would allow you to breathe again, to trust that somewhere in this vast world, you matter, your experience matters. You may need someone to sit with you in your pain, to hold you for as long as you require so that your body can recognize that you are in, accompanied, safe, and embraced by love. To begin to grasp that love can never truly be separated from you, even when it seems distant. I want to take the time, especially for those parts that have descended into despair, to reach out and let you know that you are not alone. In this world, there are places driven by compassion that lead from the heart. Support is available when you need it, as long as you can find the courage to reach out and slowly discover a different path through your experiences.